so much time of conditioning against our blackness. Mm. We've lost education on how to manage ourselves yeah. in our natural state. When it came for things like graduation and going out to parties, I would pull out weave. Yeah. And we it always think that that's the best version, the of, best ourselves. version of ourselves. Yeah. Yes. I had to kind of, I guess, reach within and see if deep down I find myself beautiful as this. But then again, I guess it's an individual thing. So it's not for someone else to tell you this. It's for you to discover by yourself. By yourself. And some people are genuinely really happy with their natural hair and they just find it easier to throw in a wig, which I completely understand. But I do really encourage people to try and, I guess, understand their hair, not just straight away try and cover it all the time. Yeah. And... Hi guys, welcome to Mo Chunks TV and welcome to another installment of Chit Chat with Mo where I tell you about life experiences, give you some advice and put my own spin on it. So in today's video I have a guest. Hi. Would you like to introduce yourself? My name's Shami hey, Williams. Show me. <laughs> um, I work in mental health. She does. Um, and I talk a lot. You also run something. Yeah, I run... Um, <laughs> She's about to forget. <laughs> I run um, a platform called Lafia Health which yeah. is about promoting um, the health and well-being of people from African and Caribbean backgrounds. By any chance, is that because of Alafia? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's so cool. Oh, amazing. Okay, so today we are going to be talking about natural hair, um, just like the leaps and bounds that come with, you know, being natural. Can I say 21st century or is that a bit dramatic? Okay, let's start with the good. What is one of the most like positive things you would say comes with you know rocking your hair naturally like how often do you rock your hair naturally by the way um pretty much 90 percent of the time i do uh -huh. um when you say natural do you mean like with braids and all of that or is that um something define else? what you because it's, it's actually very different for everyone um with me i try to abstain from things that would be considered i guess more on the european side so yeah. i still do braids i still do um kinky twists and all of that I'm not, I still do extensions, but I wouldn't, not that I'm against them, I would do a straight weave or whatever, I, I, but I just don't. Yeah. yeah. When would you say you like went natural? Um, when I was 17, I tried to make a conscious effort to stay away from straight hairstyles. Wow. Because I found myself wanting to do it all the time and not liking my hair anymore. So I got more used to it and then it got to a point where I couldn't afford a new weave and I was really upset. I didn't want to go to school. I was in sixth form at the time. Yeah. Um, and then I realised how ridiculous that was. So mm. I started just going 100%. I just started doing my afro at sixth form. I hated it and I was really insecure, but it kind of just immersed me into my fear of... I didn't even know what I feared at the time. Mm. But yeah, that was good for me. I think my, my, my little sister's going through something similar in a sense of she's taking her hair out and now she doesn't know what to do with it. And I think a lot of people make the mistake of thinking when you have length, because like my sister, she has a lot of hair. Like in my family, we're quite, you know, blessed. Even, yeah. even the language I'm using already. We're blessed <laughs> in, that, in that regard in terms of like we have long hair, but even then it's not about the length for her. It's more about the texture. Yeah. And like the hair not looking neat enough, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a, it's a notion that, you know, a lot of us have to kind of deal with. In terms of like the language surrounding natural hair, like, cause I just said length and I put the word blessed. Blessed, yeah. Do you get, and that's just a subconscious thing that we, we do, I think. Definitely. With me going to hairdressers, they'd always scream, cause my hair has been, it's always been very full. Mm. They'd always scream and be like, oh, you should have, blow dried it you hmm. should relax it you texturize should so i've always felt like my hair was a flaw mm. and something has to be done for it to be presentable and that's just from growing up um but then luckily for me mm. um, my mum she's just been i don't even know what it was it's not her her view wasn't political but she was just against me doing anything that seemed too mature or just out of bounds so yeah. I, I always had as a Have child you ever relaxed no she okay. never let me do that even though i begged her um, she just used to corner my hair, she used to braid it and sometimes take me to a hairdresser as well. Mm. With natural hair, obviously you get the unprofessional, you get the unruly, you get the wild. I got that a lot in primary school. Oh, your hair's so wild, mm. it's so this. Um, it's like a clown, kind of, when children are describing it, it's like a clown's hair and people always wanted to touch it. So you feel like you're, you don't feel like you're like everyone else. You feel like there's something, you know, like Weird a monument about, on yes. your head. Up in this country, you feel very othered when you're younger and you 
have your hair out. Yeah. What kind of um, secondary school did you go to? Was it like predominantly? Predominantly um, black. Predominantly black. And no, you still experienced that? No. In primary school, I experienced a lot of othering. Then in in the predominantly black secondary school I went to, um, people had different hairstyles. But a lot of the black girls at the time started experimenting with weaves and all okay. of that. And you know the gelling of the hair and mm-hmm. all of the you know those you know how you have the, the <laughs> yeah. So now I don't have to do it. Yeah. But, all of that um and i guess because i never knew how to do any of that stuff um, my hair was still seen as messy and i've always been like 4c even 4z yeah so i've always been nappy and all yeah. of that um yet even within black hair there's still a hierarchy of textures as well and i've always been at the bottom of that hierarchy yeah and i think even in like mainstream media when they're like advertising products they tend to use the girls the three a's to the three c's to advertise for girls with hair like us and i think even recently a lot has come out in terms of like the products that we use on our hair and now they have carcinogens yeah and um some of them cause like fibroids and stuff like Mm -hmm. that um so they damage reproductive systems they cause cancer and all of that is quite same Scary. with relaxing, and, and speaking of which, what's kind of your view on um, permanently straightening your hair? I don't, I'm not against it, but then when I put it into context, because it's something I've always wanted as a child, fully understand why anyone would do it, mm. I understand why people think that straight hair is easier to manage, yeah. and I think that from so much time of conditioning against us, like our blackness mm. in like, the misnatural state, mm. we've lost education on how to manage ourselves yeah. in our natural state, so obviously yeah. most people... Even myself, I probably find it easier to manage straighter hair. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, part of my journey was learning what I can do with my natural hair. Because at first, I used to just rock afros because I, I didn't really know what else to do that didn't look childish. Yeah, um, that's something then, I wanted to talk about soon, yeah. actually. So yeah. now I've seen your hair, something mm. I might try another time. Yeah. I, do you know what I mean? This hairstyle never occurred to me. Mm-hmm. Even the one on my head now, even as simple as it is, yeah. I only just got the idea to do it last week mm. um so i'm still on my journey of learning even to gel my hair was a very difficult thing before. yeah i think everyone's hair is definitely different and you find out what works and what doesn't work as yeah. you go along that's why a lot of these natural hair gurus like as much as they're really really helpful and i did see this hairstyle on one of them actually you need yeah. to kind of you know be very like open-minded as well it might not look exactly how it looks on the mixed face girl that did it on youtube yeah. um it might look slightly different but i think you just you live and you learn with your natural hair but i think that is another like language i kind of want us to explore in terms of like the childishness of of natural hair yeah um we hear a lot of people saying that when they have their natural hair out not even even those with relaxed hair say they feel they look a lot younger um, they feel less of a, a woman. Yeah, I think I'm going to parallel it with makeup because okay. some people have also have those views with makeup and mm. feel that same kind of dependence. Yeah. Um, I feel when you're a child as well, I, I think for a lot of people when they first wanted to do a weave, yeah, it was presented as a thing that's for women. When you get yeah. to 16, you can do it. Like a rite of passage. Yeah. yeah. So prior to that, we were all, well, most of us were doing like having cornrows and all of that. So now when we see it on adult women it looks childish yeah um and would you would you say you're comfortable with doing certain things that you, you you might deem childish um me yeah i would as of recent because i've kind of forced myself into consciously realizing what my driving force was behind wanting to straighten my hair and wearing all these weaves i have been exploring a lot of natural styles so for me i'm quite comfortable going out in a hairstyle that looks very childish yeah yeah okay so we've gone through like childishness and um the neatness of natural hair but in terms of like professional settings do you feel like you're you're done up enough when you have your natural hair just in its most natural state as well that's something i've um i've kind of struggled with especially when it would be the interviewing stage Mm. i would always make sure that my hair looks as straight or as whatever as european as it can be because i'd be very worried about how i'd be taken so my normal hairstyles i wouldn't have that at an interview i would have a massive panic when i get an email that i have an interview on this day and i'd go and really really stick my hair back and Mm. then put on a straight ponytail or something like that or make it look long try to accentuate the length and Mm -hmm. um all of that because i'm i I am aware that from outside is it how my natural hair would be perceived and how if if it's too bushy if it's too this it might be perceived as less professional um and obviously to navigate to make your money you need to do what you need to do but once you get the job you can be as relaxed as possible 
and I think something yeah. that a lot of um, a, lo- a lot of us do subconsciously. Um, I don't know who you saw the whole thing with like Blue Ivy recently and how everyone suddenly started praising her natural hair when yeah. before it was like people were cussing Beyonce like do something with this child's hair, but now that it's got length. So is that something that we're kind of obsessed with as a community? I think everything to do with our hair, we use um, European standards to measure it. So that's the straightness mm. of it. Um, that's the length of it. Um, yeah, everything like that. We we don't look at what our own hair is and how. Because some people they're just not they're just not gonna have length because it's not in their genetics. Genetics, that have length. yeah. yeah. Um, and for them, they will never be. They will never feel like their hair is beautiful until mm, it's long. Yeah. Um, and some people, their hair will never be wavy, um, and they won't feel beautiful until it is. And yeah. I feel like it's the same way with with Blue Ivy's hair mm. um, because it, especially when there was like a lot of comparison with her and Nor. And yeah. North was, um, you know, the mixed girl mixed that had a lot straighter hair and all of that. Yeah, and Blue Maybe Ivy. even 2C, if there is that. Yeah, Blue <laughs> Ivy's hair is not even 4C, yeah, but no, no. just in that juxtaposition, yeah. she was the nappy-headed one. And until it had length, that's when she was praised, which is really sad. But let's go on to worst experiences. What have you kind of experienced in terms of, like, comments or, you know, just random things that people might have said to you um i remember when i first got straight into the natural hair movement and yeah. i got all the products everything <laughs> and i got this water bottle and i was spraying it on my hair as yeah. well and i was talking about it all the time and my friends would be like is it a plant why are you doing <sighs> it like this um and um i remember one time i did this ridiculous hairstyle and the hair was in my face and i had all these oils castor oil whatever and i was dripping into my eyes and it was <laughs> Throughout the day, my eyes were burning and like tears were coming out. And my friend was like, "You know, you're so stupid. Like, just go and." You were trying to yeah. do natural fringe. Yeah. I feel like you do that hairstyle though. It looks nice. Thank you. I've mastered it now. But yeah. Back then, I, I, there was a lot of struggles. I guess do you know that criticism was rightly so. But mm. I did have a long journey to get. Before Boy, I, I think that I think that is the thing, and a lot of people get frustrated before they actually get to the resolution. Yeah. In terms of their natural hair, we're yeah. not trying to convince you to go natural. And for me, I think my experience in terms of like negatives was very early on um i wouldn't even have considered myself natural natural at that time but i just stopped relaxing my hair my hair's always been thick even when it was relaxed so when i stopped relaxing it was even thicker and um i remember going into my exam hall and then the lady was like can you pack it away and she was like oh it's it's distracting and i was like what do you mean it's it's distracting and that's why i asked like what kind of secondary school did you go to like i went to a predominantly oh. white secondary school i was late as well so everyone was looking to the back like trying to see what was going on yeah. and i was just i just kind of conformed in that moment and i was just like let me just tie this but looking back at it i was like that was such a not needed like I, it was an exam. If you're distracted by my hair, you deserve to be distracted. It like, was an exam. If you Why like, don't face your exams? It was, it was very unfair, I think, to do that to a 17-year-old. She just year felt old. like yeah. making a snide remark, yeah. Another thing for me in terms of like the difficulties of natural hair, this journey so far, like some of you may have noticed when I first started this channel, I used to wear weaves a lot. And that was as a result of someone saying to me that, oh, if you want to blow on YouTube, that you need to be like these American babes with <laughs> with long, you know, everyone was obsessed with the middle part and the, the long, yeah. yeah, with the long and make sure that your makeup is on fleek all the time. So me so I was taking notes, I was like, okay, so this is what I need to do. I, I did get the weave, this was in <laughs> uni um, first year. I'd always be rocking the makeup, the eyelashes, whatever. And um, I just realized that it wasn't my authentic self yeah. eventually. I think last year, especially, similar to what you were saying about always wanting to reach the weave although i was very comfortable with my natural hair when it came for things like graduation and going out to parties i would pull out weave and you always think that that's the best version the best version of ourselves yes and i had a problem with that you know i was like why is it every time and it wasn't just any weave it would be my straight blonde weave so texture color and it was like what exactly am i trying to achieve although it looked nice I had to kind of, I guess, reach within and see if deep down I find myself beautiful as this. And yeah. not just in normal settings, but in social settings as well. Um, I think that's really important because some people, and I, yeah, some people, they, they kind of, they're the same, but then mm. there's a lot of pushback when you mention it to them. But then again, I guess it's an individual thing. So it's not for someone else to tell you this. It's for you to discover by yourself. By yourself. And some people are genuinely really happy with their natural hair and they just find it easier to throw in a wig, which I completely understand because like my natural hair is not even easy. 
and I don't like it when people try to falsely say, do you know what, it's it's easier than it's not easy. Yeah. Um. Well, maybe do you know? What? Maybe I'm just. It depends. Yeah. It I'm depends. It depends on who you are when you master your hair. Um. But I do really encourage people to try and, I guess, understand their hair, not just straight away try and cover it all the time. Yeah. And, yeah, because at the end of the day, it's going to just get worse. You're going to cover it more. Yeah, I think and something that definitely stuck out to me was in candid conversations. <laughs> um, and one of the ladies said, you show off what you love. And it's so true. Like, you know, a lot of us can claim to love our natural face. Let's just take it away from, na- from natural hair for a second. But if nobody sees it, you know, do you, do you really love it? Or you just have you just accepted it for yourself or um, and no one else out there can see it? As long yeah. as nobody else sees it, it's, you're good. But as soon as everybody else sees it, it's a problem. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, even the whole protective style thing, some people... What really, are you protecting? Yeah, like, <laughs> the hair that we never see. And even some of the things that they're doing to the hair is very damaging, but they're calling it protective. So by the time they finished for the years, like, doing all the, the comb in the front and all of that, the edge is gone, the hair cut, they've only been using 99p pomade on the Ooh. hair but for some reason that's what they call protective like it doesn't make there's no correlation um like just admit to yourself why you're doing it not that it's a bad thing not that anyone's forcing you it's your money that you're spending but at but, least have that moment of yeah and i do feel like there's a big number done on us mm. as a community yeah um, and so much on learning and learning yeah. and relearning to do and we have I a think. lot of learning to do a, yeah. a lot of way to go because i i do think i don't know like if it's some if you do like your natural hair it should be something that it's very sometimes you're in it sometimes you're not in it exactly. and all of that um not just you know 90 percent of the time you're not you don't show it or 100 percent of the time you don't show it um but yeah. you're somehow protecting it from what yeah. yeah i think i i definitely decided to put down the weaves i locked them up in my wardrobe and i never looked back since like last august and it's been interesting and like i said about length before like i do have length but there were times when i didn't feel pretty enough or i didn't feel glam enough yeah. but i'm i'm still learning to to love it and in a world full of bad bees um <laughs> <laughs> in a world full of bad bees um and i'm trying to be a new young queen yeah. i guess so it's a, it's a big journey like i don't think like i haven't learned to, i'm not 100 percent comfortable with my natural hair i'll never pretend that i'm like a i'm not a stylist for it i, I barely know how to do anything to do this one which is a simple slick bag i had to facetime someone instructing me how to you know how many pieces to put it in and all of that yeah um it is a journey so it's not, it's never like you know you watch one youtube video and now you're a naturalista yeah it, just, it takes a while just putting myself in a position of like big sister i guess and understanding that i do have some influence on the people that watch me i am very intentional about rocking my natural i don't know whether that's the same for you if you have yeah. like younger people that look up to you definitely just making in sure. my in my church in watford um i have like a lot of little girls that kind of look up to me and because they they grew up in Watford, they go to these, you know, they're, they're in areas where their school is very, um, where they're a minority and they want lighter skin, they want straight mm. hair, they want all of this. So when they see what I'm doing with my hair, how I do certain things, they try and copy it and they ask me, how do I do this? And I tell them and all of that. And it, it means a lot to me that I'm able to impart that because mm. maybe in their parents or um, there's no one in their area that they know that's a black girl, I guess, growing up in a similar world that they have. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I do think that it's it's very important for the next generation to know that it is at least an option to do. Yeah, yeah not, and it, it can be beautiful as well. I think yeah. that is the thing where people don't feel beautiful enough. Yeah, um, that is definitely something I try to break by being that person that does come on camera, um, on big big YouTube with natural hair, barely any extensions, and yeah. yeah, making it seem like it's it's okay. You know, you can you can be your most authentic self and. Yeah, I think that kind of wraps up our conversation. Is there anything else that you wanted to kind of bring up? I think we covered it all, to be yeah. honest, yeah. The most important thing is being honest with yourself. Um, with anything, how you present yourself matters and what are you trying to present and why are you trying to present it. Um, I think another important thing is to understand that if you are trying to go for the natural, it is a journey. Um, your twist out is not going to look like <laughs> a mixed race girl's twist out. Yeah. It took me a while to get twist outs. I think I only got it done this 2019 well. So it's, um, yeah, it, it does it does take a while, but it is worth it in the end. Yeah, yeah. and I've had a few people um, pop up saying on, like, maybe, like, watch trending videos if I can do, like, a natural hair tutorial. I'll see if it fits. I don't know where it would fit right now. Um, maybe if we did a more casual 
maybe in being my chunks i don't know but right now it doesn't really fit in any series but um yeah i think just love your hair try as much as possible to kind of just push through um the resistance because your hair will resist some styles um yes. but eventually it, it gets there yeah 100 percent and that's all we really have for you guys today. Make sure you like today if you liked it. Do follow Shami on all her socials and follow all her movements. She's really, really amazing, really, really um, wise Thank woman. You. Make sure you like today if you liked it. Share it with your friends and subscribe to this channel for more. Until next time, guys, peace and love, peace and chunks. Bye.